In this lecture, we will be studying the concept of collinearity and the variance inflation factor. So first, let's recall our multilinear regression model. So we have response variable yi, and this is going to be written as a linear combination of the predictor variables x1 through xm, and this equation represents the ith case. And then we have a white noise term epsilon i, where the white noise terms are all mean zero and variance sigma epsilon squared. And we have n observations. So the way we're writing this is this x1 is a vector of observations of the predictor variable, and y1 is the response variable in the first case. So x is a vector of p predictor variables. Now one natural question when you're actually thinking about all of your predictor variables and trying to decide if you want to use them all is what happens if two predictor variables, say xi and xj, are highly correlated? And we'll, of course, focus on the case where they're different variables. Well, this is where we get into this idea of collinearity. So we say, if two predictor variables, xi and xj, are highly correlated, we call them collinear. And the issue is that this increases the standard error, as measured by the standard deviation of the beta i hat, so the estimator that we get for a coefficient of one of these variables, because it introduces redundancy to the model. Some examples would be as follows. Suppose that you had different measurements of a person except for height, and you had both glove size and mitten size it's going to turn out to not be a good idea to use both of those because they're going to be collinear. There's going to be a high correlation. If someone has large hands, they're going to be wearing, say, large gloves or large mittens. If they have very small hands, they'd be wearing very small gloves or very small mittens. So if you were using, if you were trying to use these as a proxy for hand size to then predict height, the collinearity between these two measurements will make them very redundant in a multilinear regression to predict height, and probably you only want to include one of them because of that. The redundancy will increase the error in the estimate of the beta for each of these two predictors. Something in finance, suppose that you wanted a predictor that had credit worthiness of an organization or a firm or, or a sovereignty. We have three major credit rating agencies in the United States, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. And chances are, if you used some type of credit rating from each of these three, you would find high collinearity between them. And as a result, would likely want to remove one or two of these and only use the remaining one because of collinearity. Now looking at this, we say, well, we say if they're highly correlated, we say they're collinear. Well, what do we mean highly correlated? Well, we can measure that and we can measure the effect of that correlation via the variance inflation factor or VIF. And the variance inflation factor, VIF sub j, of predictor variable xj measured how much the squared standard error, so the variance of that beta j, when we estimate it, so the squared standard error of xj is increased by having the other predictor variables in the model. So how shaky is our estimate of that coefficient? for predictor variable xj if we have 
all the other predictor variables in the model with it. And the way we compute this variance inflation factor for xj is we regress xj onto the other predictors. So we have p minus 1 remaining predictor variables. So do a multilinear regression where xj is now the response and the others are the predictors. Well, that multilinear regression has an r square. Let's call that rj square. And that's going to be a measure of how well xj can be predicted by those other predictor variables. Recall that r squared of a regression we can think of as a percentage of between 0 and 100%. And it tells us the variation in the response variable that can be predicted by the regression. So we have this rj squared, and then we use it to define the variance inflation factor for that xj. And we write it as 1 over the quantity 1 minus rj squared. And let's think about what this looks like as a function of rj squared. Well, first of all, if we draw it as a graph and we think of rj squared as on the horizontal axis and the variance inflation factor for xj on the vertical, well, we know that this has a domain of 0, 1 because, again, our rj squared is an r squared, which means it's between 0 and 1. And this means, if we think about this here, if we plug in 0 for rj squared, we're going to be at 1. And then as we increase rj squared from 0, we are shrinking the denominator, but it is remaining positive. So as we move in the domain to the right from 0, we are increasing in our variance inflation factor. And if we go all the way to the case when rj squared is equal to 1, that would result in a 0 in the denominator. So what we have here is a graph that looks like this. We have this vertical asymptote when rj squared would be equal to 1. So the closer rj squared gets to 1, the larger the variance inflation factor. And the larger the variance inflation factor, hence the name, the larger the variance of that beta j hat, which is the coefficient in the multilinear regression original model associated with this predictor, xj. And so think again about this in terms of what the rj squared tells you. When rj squared is getting closer to 1, that means those other predictors are good predictors of xj, which is bad. That's redundancy in your system of, pred of predictors. So as rj squared is getting close to 1, we're moving to the right in the domain here, the variance inflation factor is getting big. That's a bad sign for including xj as a predictor. So once we start to see this variance inflation factor get large, we want to start thinking about removing xj from our set of predictors. And a general heuristic rule is that if our variance inflation factor gets beyond 5, that's bad in terms of redundancy, and xj should be removed from our set of predictors. And coming back to the idea of parsimony, it, it may feel like you're getting rid of information, but if your other predictors, if your other p minus 1 predictors are very good predictors of xj, then you don't necessarily need it the cost you bear by including it is that you have another regression parameter. You have the coefficient that goes with xj. By removing it, you get to throw that coefficient away from your model. You reduce your model from p to p minus 1 predictors. And, and remember, in this idea of parsimony, you want to be balancing the idea of 
best fitting your data with your model and trying to be minimal in the sense of not introducing too many parameters. And so this variance inflation factor is a very handy tool for detecting redundancy in the way of collinearity amongst your predictors, which can allow you to remove some of them and, and make your model a little bit more lean.